What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today we're gonna take a look at iOS 11 beta 4 one week after its release. Kind of just see you know, how it's been performing here on my iPhone 7, some of the new features I missed in the original video and more. And since a lot of people are still kind of confused, iOS 11 beta 4, the developer beta 4, is the same exact firmware as iOS 11 public beta 3. So first off, iOS 11 beta 4 is definitely more stable and a lot more fluid and polished than beta 3 and any other previous version of iOS 11. And it really just comes down to the the basic things like opening and closing out of applications quickly, the multitasking, you know, just doing random things inside of applications, especially third party applications, like all the time inside of the YouTube application when I go to share, you know, something it, it may lag a little bit. And Twitter, when I go to retweet something, it may, stu uh, you know, stutter a little bit. But in beta four, everything seems to be just a lot more smooth. And it seems to be with a focus on third party applications. So a lot more, you know, apps you get from the app store seem to run a lot better here on beta four. As far as battery life goes, iOS 11 beta 4 is definitely better than beta 3, which should be obvious since beta 2 battery life was actually better than beta 3. So uh, iOS 11 beta 4, the battery life is definitely better on beta 4 than it was in beta 2, 3, and obviously the first beta as well. Now it's only about a 30 minutes uh, more usage time. So it's nothing you're really going to notice in real life unless you're comparing like beta 1 to beta 4. You know, but as far as beta three to beta four, it's definitely an increase in battery as well as beta two to beta four. So better battery life, which is always nice. However, I would still say that the battery life in 10.3.3 is better than the battery life in iOS 11 beta four. But that's kind of obvious since this is still in beta. I'm sure the final release of iOS 11 will be better in terms of battery life than 10.3.3. All right, so now let's take a look at some more new features in iOS 11 beta four that I missed the first go around. So the first one is in settings general about. And if you go down to the capacity section here, it's actually going to show the capacity that you see on marketing materials like the box and in iTunes and things like that. So it doesn't actually show your real capacity because you know, you know, the, the system takes up some capacity. So it's not going to show, you know, like 28.4 gigabytes anymore. It's actually going to show the full capacity, which isn't realistic. And I'm not a big fan of this at all because it's really kind of, you know, deceiving because you don't get the full 32 gigabytes. So not a big fan of that, but that is a change here in beta four. So now if we activate airplane mode from the control center, it actually disables and turns off both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth instead of just disconnecting them from what they're currently connected to. And of course, cellular turns off as well. Now this was a big thing in previous versions of iOS 11 beta. A lot of people didn't like how turning on airplane mode didn't actually disconnect you from Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or didn't actually turn it off. It would just disconnect you from whatever you were connected to. So I'm glad that iOS 11 beta four went back to turning off completely the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth when you activate airplane mode. Now, if we go into the messages settings, you're going to notice that we have a new section here for sync now. And this actually replaces something that was there before, which showed, you know, the option to disable messages in iCloud for this device or all devices. So now you can't actually do that. You only have one option here now to sync now, sync your messages through iCloud. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this because I did like how you could go into this section here and disable iCloud messages for all devices. You can do it for just a single device in the iCloud settings, but for all devices, I really like that option here. So not really a huge fan of this, but I don't think it's a big deal either. So you can now use AirPods with the Discord application, something you couldn't do in iOS 11 beta three or any other previous version of iOS 11 beta. And without an update to the actual Discord application, it now works in iOS 11 beta four, which is nice. And you can see here, when I was actually downloading the Discord application, you can see I got this new pop-up to enter in my Apple ID password. And it actually looks like the Apple Pay screen here and actually gives you the notification that gives you a little sound, a UI sound when you actually enter in the correct password. So this is pretty nice. I'm not sure if I really like it better than the old version, but it definitely looks a lot more professional than it did previously. So now if we go to the control center and if we go ahead and set a quick timer, so if I'm gonna go ahead and do, uh, I'll just resume the timer I had, so 35 seconds, you're gonna notice down here we have a little animation in the stopwatch with the little timer there. You can see it's going around like a clock that is one animation that I missed in the first video where I talked about iOS 11 beta four and some of the animations down here. I missed that one. So it's really cool how you can see the animation there on the timer. So if you lock your device and then go over to the widget section and scroll all the way down, you're going to notice that we now have the press home to unlock text here at the very bottom, something you didn't see in iOS 11 beta three. So if we go into the app store and if we go to updates, you can actually swipe down now to refresh and see if you have any new updates. So this is really nice and convenient for just being able to refresh just like that without having to go to apps and then back 
to updates and just wait for it to refresh by itself like you had to do in previous versions of iOS. And then of course, I wanted to show you guys the new Touch ID UI that I mentioned in the original Beta 4 video, but I didn't actually show it. So all you have to do is simply tap on a notification and you get this new UI here that shows Touch ID to open Instagram, use passcode. So it's really cool, really cool looking. Again, I mentioned this in the first video, but I didn't actually show it in action. So those are some more new features I found here in iOS 11 Beta 4. And I'm sure there's even more features out there, but those are just the ones I've noticed over the past week of using Beta 4 here on my iPhone 7. Now, of course, I get this question all the time and I told you I'd answer it at the end of this video. So should you install iOS 11 Beta 4, Developer Beta 4, or Public Beta 3 on your daily driver device? And I say, sure. I mean, it's stable enough. I don't really see too many major bugs that are really going to hinder, you know, your day-to-day -day usage like phone calls or texts or anything like that. You know, there's very minimal random reboots or very minimal bugs that actually will cause a big scene, you know, on your device if you're using it as a daily driver. So I don't think it's a big deal like a lot of people make it out to be. So, you know, if you want to go for it, if you really like a lot of the new features in iOS 11, I'd say go for it. And of course, you can always downgrade to 10.3.3 if you need to without any kind of issue. But anyways, guys, that is how iOS 11 beta 4 has been treating me on my iPhone 7 here over the past week. Really like it. Definitely a lot more stable than beta 3. Definitely a lot of cool and new welcome features here in beta 4. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe for a lot more videos on iOS 11 beta and of course the final version and future versions of iOS 11 as well. So thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you soon.